Welcome back. We are joined by Katie Overy, Dubai MC, voiceover artist, presenter, and creator of That Grief Relief podcast with Katie Overy. It's a podcast about overcoming challenging and hard moments in life. Welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Not at all. I, hear, I could hear your voice on the radio so much. It's, a, it's such a radio voice and a podcast voice. It's lovely. It's really weird because people say that to me all the time, and I, I obviously don't think about it. And then when some people don't even know what I do, they're like, oh, you have such an interesting voice. I'm like, That's handy, because <laughs> I use it a lot. Podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's really exciting to be here. Thanks very much. Not at all. So we want to spread the word about that Grief Relief podcast. Yes. Um, can you tell us, just to give everyone a bit of an overview of what it is and why you created it? So first of all, it, it does sound quite sad and almost depressing and what have you, that Grief Relief podcast, but it was born out of my own experiences. So I have suffered quite a lot of loss in my life. I lost my parents. Uh, 10 years ago in quite quick succession and other uh, forms of grief which is what we delve into in the podcast as well however me and my family deal with it in a really open-hearted and light-hearted way which is what I talk about a lot on the podcast we kind of because of our parents we deal with it using humor and openness and I just want to talk to anyone about my parents Mm -hmm. so I don't want people to be scared to talk, you know, to ask me about my parents or my other lost loved ones. So the podcast originally started out with, it was going to be me and two of my brothers, Russell and Oliver, and it was going to be called, and I'm sorry if I offend anyone, but it was going to be called the Dead Parents Society because it was just going to be us chatting and just sharing stories of our parents and other people's parents, what have you. Um, it, it then just evolved basically. Um, I just decided, okay, I'm going to take it on myself. And it was originally just going to rotate my members of my family and just talking about how we deal with grief. Mm-hmm. But then people started to reach out to me and said, love the podcast. I, you know, I would love to share the story of X, Y, and Z, whomever they had lost, which was like, I was like, what? People want to share their stories? Then it kind of evolved even more to what you know, other forms of grief, the loss of a pet, the loss of a marriage or a relationship um, in the current circumstances. Someone, um, I'm recording a, uh, an episode next week of someone who lost their job after 25 years, just grieving their old life. Yeah. Um, but it's really funny. And I don't mean to be like big headed. It's not, it, that's not just from me, but it's super lighthearted, super funny. My guests are amazing. They just want to tell their stories. And it seems to be really helping people, which well, I wasn't expecting. Well, this is amazing. I think it's so interesting that it's not when, when I thought about grief for myself, I was like, have I experienced grief? Well, have I, is a close loved one? But then, you know, divorce is a grief. Yeah. Like you said, losing his job is a grief. But there's some very touching moments as well. So it's like, it's, it's quite an interesting one because I think I heard your brother describe the moment he heard that your mom had died. Yes. And then passing that and then having to pass that information on to... Your mom's sister. Yeah. And like, and, but then two seconds later, he's laughing about a dragon coming into the room and you're just like, um, so, but do you think even when, when did these events happen? Do you find that this podcast was nearly a form of therapy for you to relive them? Kind of always. But I mean, I, anyone that knows me knows that I will talk about my parents all the time and at any given opportunity. Um, I'm very, very, very open with it. Um, So yes, it is a form of therapy, but then the DMs that I get as well on Instagram, which is very interesting for this region, which I, I'm sure we'll touch on a bit later, is that so many people message me direct and say, thank you so much for this. You know, I lost someone or, you know, even my pet died and I don't feel like I can grieve because society won't let me. And mm-hmm. it's quite fascinating. But yeah, I mean, well, it's therapy, I suppose. We will talk about grief potentially being a taboo here, but it's so interesting because if you say, if I'm in a conversation with someone and I say, oh, how's your dad? And you're like, oh, he died. And yeah. like, oh, sorry. <laughs> and, and the conversation, because my dad died when I was a baby, so it's like, but it's very much that, oh, no, it's fine. Like, it's absolutely fine. You're in the dead dad club too. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I'll get <laughs> but, you a membership card. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I've been waiting my whole life for that. But it's, but it's, it's that thing where I sometimes feel awkward because I don't know how to continue yeah. the conversation. And it nearly does, uh, it just puts like, there's no way to to make someone feel comfortable so actually talking about it does open it up but like you were saying potentially grief being a taboo when someone hears someone dies there's that grieving period Mm. and then after that you can't really talk about it anymore so how does how can people become more regular more open talking about grief I mean it's a really good question and I know there's a lot of cultures and religions and everything and, and everything does differ 
But I think it's how you are that allows the people around you to, you know, I've just made a joke about you having a dead dad, which is an awful thing. And I'm sorry if I've offended anyone, but because of the way you said it, you kind of gave me permission to, uh. to allow you to speak like that. There are people that I know whose uh, family members have passed away 20 years ago. And the minute they think or see, speak about it, you can see they're instantly anxious, instantly tense. So mm. I'm not going to make a joke, you know, I, yeah. I can read a room <laughs> basically, but I don't know. I think it's what I, Honestly, I'm, I'm 18 episodes in and I've been really surprised by not only my guests, but the, as I say, the DMs I've had from people that wish people would ask them more about what's going on. And again, grief isn't just about lost loved ones, it's about everything. Because yeah. as I say at the beginning of the podcast, we all grieve differently. Just because I use humor, doesn't mean that you're gonna use humor, doesn't mean that you're gonna use humor. It's totally different. But humour is a way to bring it to the table to talk about it because it's literally yeah. that thing of, and if you have a friend or a relative who's grieving, you want to be there for them. But then it gets to the point of, and actually, yeah, so I have a situation, it gets to the point of after a couple of weeks, I don't want to, am I reminding them? Yeah. So it's like, I want to check in, but I don't want to remind them of the fact. I want to make sure they're okay. I want to ask them how they're doing, but I don't also know, don't know how to do it. It's the same with kind of mental health. You, mm. you find the right questions. Mm. And actually the grief topic isn't explored enough, I don't think. So I think it's fantastic that you're doing it. Mm. Um, in terms of DMs that you're getting, um, what is the general response? Um, I've been overwhelmed by the response, but um, and not just from obviously <laughs> friends and family that you would think are going to like it. But genuinely from people um, saying that they're so grateful for it and then people that just outpour their stories. Yeah. Um, you know, an incredible woman whose husband passed away nine years ago. She's now gone on to remarry and she tells me her story. And I actually checked in with her on, because I saw she posted about the anniversary of her husband's passing. Um, people talk a lot about, it's quite a long word, disenfranchised grief. So this is grief that isn't socially recognized. So um, episode 18 that came out last week with Alex Grant, she spoke about the death of her relationship. Now she wasn't married, so she was just with her partner for nine years, but it, it knocked her for six. 100%. And But a lot of people sort of don't accept that that can be so bad. You know, people would say to her, oh, you know, you'll get over it, you'll meet someone else, or there's plenty more fish in the sea. But she said, I felt like I was dying. And I just, I felt like I couldn't actually say to people I was grieving. So yeah, the DMs are, are amazing. And um, a lot of DMs from men and a lot of DMs from men from an Arab background or a Sweet. South Asian background, whereby they will say, my father passed away. I feel I can't grieve because I'm now the head of the family. Uh, um, or people who actually say that they're seeing a therapist, but would be terrified if their family found out um, for the shame that it would bring on it. That's not just a cultural thing, that, that's, super, um, that's super global as well. And actually my episode that's coming out this week is um, with a guy called A Fool, who you may know from Virgin Radio. He was in Dubai A2L and Virgin Radio Oman. Um, his father passed away four years ago and he talks about that. So he's from Kerala um, and you talk about wait time and you don't want to bring it up again. He talks about the fact that there is then another gathering 40 days after the passing of their loved one. Mm -hmm. And Athul speaks very openly of like, why would you do that? <laughs> well, I don't want to be reminded about this. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's uh, you know, amazing. So I'm really looking forward to that episode coming out. Well, that's so interesting because it's so, grief is so personal to people. And some people um, would maybe look forward, like the Irish wake, and they would look forward to it because yeah. it's, it's very much a storytelling and a happy time it tries to be. Um, but then it's all down to very personal, like you said, people yeah. grieve differently. Yeah. Um, you said you're 19 episodes in. Which episode has kind of like stood out to you as surprising, as one that you didn't think that would kind of knock you for six? Yeah. Did? Um, good question. So even the ones with my family you, it, are quite interesting because sometimes there are parts of the story that even I don't know or that I've embellished. Mm -hmm. And you're hearing some of them and I'm like, really did that happen you know and I have no clue it is because again so even myself and my my two brothers we have even remembered the loss of our parents in kind of mildly different ways or my brother Russell talks about a time after my mum passed away that we were all around the dinner table and he lost his temper with Oliver and I my, my younger brother because we were being quite light-hearted we weren't joking about what happened we were being light-hearted Russell kind of you know lost his temper and I don't remember that. 
like at yeah. all. But in terms of people that came to me, um, episode five was the first person that wasn't a member of my family. Um, and it was a woman called Nicole Majdalani, Nicole and Trend, I don't know if you know her. And I knew she, she came to me and said, I'd be happy, you know, I'd love to talk about my sister. Her, her sister passed away. But it wasn't that that shocked me. It was like other things like within it. And I'm so sorry, I've, I've gone off on one now. <laughs> I don't find out anything about my story, my guest story. Because the idea is, is that I want to ask them as if, if I met you in a coffee shop and you said to me, my father passed away when I was a baby. I would want to ask you, oh my goodness, how old were you? How did he pass away? Like, was mm. your mum okay? And did you grow up with a stepdad? You know, I want to ask all these questions. But to a stranger, you don't normally want to do that. You sort of go, I'm sorry about that. And then awkwardly change the subject. Because you have no idea how they're feeling. Exactly. Obviously, my guests are, are open and willing to my, my questions. So mm. I just, literally, I'm just like machine gun questioning because it's all just in my brain. So yeah, you'll see in episode five, that I'm literally like, what? Everything she's saying. Yeah. Um, another sort of local hero, if you like, um, is Candy Fanucci, who started uh, Pirate Surf. Surf Pirates, sorry, Surf Pirates Rescue. Mm. No, Pirate Surf Rescue. Anyway, she has suffered untold loss. Like, it's phenomenal, even in terms of, you know, financial loss and losing businesses and going through, um, you know, separations as well. And I, I didn't know, I didn't think I'd ever meet anyone that has lost as many people as I had. And I think she now has like the badge. The um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but what then she's done with that and how then she moves that forward and teaches the children within her club is just, uh, I spent an hour speaking to Candy, just beaming, you know, mm. just full of, oh my goodness, do you know what? everything's okay and everyone you know we can all kind of do this it was really inspirational well that's interesting because that's about kind of let's say overcoming it yeah and being positive so do all of the podcasts take that similar it's okay type theme or is it very much based on the person and it's each is a different learning yeah totally different um South Shields in the northeast of England, talking as if they're having a chat over a cup of tea, yeah. and then they every now and again talk about TV and film. Uh -huh. <laughs> Him and his 
wife do a podcast called Teach Me a Lesson, and they have a teacher on each episode because about you I wasn't awfully academic at school so it's really interesting to kind of learn lessons in podcast format so I have that on in the background and that is really good well, I was a teacher for a very short period and we have some good stories <laughs> yeah there you go oh, I have to say Breaking Geek Radio because that's my brother's podcast oh. I mean it's not his <laughs> but he's on it if, but if, if it does I have to say it yeah I have to I do because he knows like it's mega mega geeky like it's not just if you're mildly into geek stuff this is mega, mega geeky, breaking geek radio. I guess so. Guys, that is it. Katie Overy with that amazing way to share human stories of people going through grief. It's very personal. It's also very fun and lighthearted at the same time. Thank you. Um, guys, that is it for us on the Love and Daily. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. We're back with you every single weekday morning and weekend morning, same time, same place. Stay safe and wash your hands. Bye. <laughs>